Hey everyone, Miko here with Behavior Analyst Supervisor. Thank you for joining us for our free Wednesday Zoom calls. Here you're watching on YouTube, but you can also join us on Wednesday. If you're interested in the link to these calls to join live, feel free to send us an email at info at behavioranalystsupervisor.com. You can also just check out our Instagram. We post questions every single day on Instagram. We also post the link to our free Zoom calls. Every Wednesday, we go through a different task list item area, such as A1. We'll talk a little bit about that task list item, and then we'll go through three mock exam questions relating to that task list area. We hope that this provides an opportunity for you to learn a little bit more about the task list and also dive deep into question dissection. We here at Behavior Analyst Supervisor really focus on providing explanations on why an answer is correct and why it's also incorrect. So we appreciate that you joined us. If you have any questions throughout the duration of this video, feel free to shoot us an email, hit that like and subscribe button for more information. Also, you can always leave a comment and we'll be sure to reach back out to you. Thanks again. And I'm Miko with Behavior Analyst Supervisor. You'll also be hearing from Amy and Kevin. Talk to you soon. What's up, everyone? Miko here with Behavior Analyst Supervisor. We're working our way through. No, this is a free one. I'm on, I'm on the wrong call. Um, or my brain is on the wrong call. This is our free Wednesday call, not our Tuesday, Thursday. So we're not working our way through the task list. We are um, simply talking about a topic. So thanks for joining us. We do these every Wednesday. Uh, you can see the, um, the schedule on our on the calendar on our website. So I'll show you at the end of this where to find the schedule of what we're going over. Oh, everyone's just saying hi. Y'all are so friendly. Um, let's see, a couple of announcements. Uh, if you're a part of our All You Need Guaranteed package, we've released our uh, audio mock. So check that out. It's in your accounts. If you're not, we will be selling that individually. So feel free to check out our website. We also have a third mock exam. I update, uploaded most of the questions today. So we'll be done with that by Friday, um, Monday at the latest, but I, I'm likely going to get it done by Friday for you all. So you have an extra mock to take this weekend. Um, I'm kind of excited to see what the scores are for it. It's, I, it was really difficult for me to write the mock because um, most of the questions are one sentence. And so um it's going to be i think it's going to be challenging in that you really have to know your stuff um and so i'm excited to see kind of what the scores are if you do it and you have questions or you um see some feedback that maybe doesn't make sense to you or you maybe disagree with one of our answers feel free to send us an email we're always happy to discuss um i'm happy to tell you what i was thinking when i wrote the question um at the end of the day we're all humans right we do our best to make the questions uh perfect for y'all but sometimes you know there could be answers depending on how you look at it so i'm happy to kind of talk to you all through that other than that you are here for the free wednesday zoom so that's what we're going to do today we are talking through g9 use discrete trial free operant and naturalistic teaching arrangements well first i want to talk through what each of these are and then after i do that I want you to give me a behavior and I'll tell you what it would look like. So first and foremost, discrete trial. Uh, when I was first becoming an RBT, um, this was like maybe five or six years ago, I remember going through training and they told me it was discrete table training, DTT. And I was like, wait a minute. So it has to happen at a table and yada, yada, yada. It doesn't, if you've been told that, um, that's okay, but it's wrong honestly. Uh, so discrete trial training, what that, or discrete trials, what that is, is it means there's a, if we think about the root word discrete, discrete means a clear beginning and end. A discrete trial means an opportunity to respond. Typically contrived, if it's not contrived, it's probably one of these others, but a discrete trial is a contrived opportunity to respond. So if I give you, um, if I write a math problem on the board and it says one plus one, and you are to answer it, that is a discrete trial. Or if you go to the bathroom and then um, I say, wash your hands, that's a discrete trial. You have one opportunity. There's a clear and distinct response that we're looking for, washing your hands, um, doing the math problem, reading a word that I ask you to read. Those are all discrete trials. In ABA, we use discrete trials to break down the skills and teach them in small, um, easy to learn ways. So that's what a discrete trial looks like or discrete trial training or whatever they call it nowadays. Uh, free operant. So free operant is a little bit different. 
Um, it a lot of times gets confused with naturalistic or discrete trial training. Uh, but what free operant means is literally, I look at the word free. You are free to do what you want to do. So if I go to the playground and I say, play, you can go on the slide or you can go on the monkey bars or you can go on the jungle gym or you can use the seesaw, right? You are making that choice. There is not a clear response that I'm looking for. That's a free operant or um, like aggression, right? That's a free operant behavior. You can engage in aggression at any point throughout the day. That means it's a free operant behavior. So when we're looking at it, you're looking at open-ended, um, you're looking at the ability to occur at any point, that all is free operant. Naturalistic teaching arrangements. Naturalistic teaching, or sometimes referred to as incidental teaching. Um, these are ways that we typically encourage manding or requesting, um, but more than that, right? More than that, um, naturalistic teaching is using the environment Sorry, I'm just letting someone in. Naturalistic teaching is using the environment to uh, contrive opportunities um, for a behavior to occur. Oh, goodness. Um, for example, an example of like a naturalistic <clears throat> teaching opportunity is if I see a kiddo playing with blocks and they grab a red block and I say, what color is that? And they respond red. I've just used the environment. The reason it's not discrete trial, because again, discrete trial is a clear response. Red is a clear response, but I'm physically using the environment, right? Natural environment training. It's also referred to a lot of times, but um, so if they're playing with blocks and I say, what color is it? That's a naturalistic teaching arrangement. Uh, another example might be um, if you're reading a book and I say, oh, where's the bird? And on the page, there's a bird, right? I'm using that book, that opportunity, your motivation to encourage that trial, um, you touching the book, the bird or whatever. So uh, that would be naturalistic teaching. Sweet. Any questions about that? If you do, could you unmute yourself? Um, I don't want to pull the chat up because I only have one screen today. So sweet. No questions. All right someone unmute yourself and just give me a behavior and I'll tell you how to make it into one of those three things. Hand flapping. Hand flapping. I love it. Um, so I was going to start saying Bueller, Bueller. That's what Kevin would do. I feel like um, hand flapping. That's a really good one. So hand flapping is certainly in the way that we track it originally is going to be um, free operant. Right, so this is a behavior that can occur at any time. Um, the way we can, that would be a hard one to make anything else, right? We couldn't, we're not teaching hand flapping, so we couldn't make it into naturalistic teaching. Um, you could show someone how to flap their hand though using discrete trial though, right? You could say, bend your hand and teach them and that would be a uh, discrete trial. So it's all about how you look at it. Discrete trial means there's a clear response. Whereas uh, free operant means you can respond at any point in time and naturalistic or incidental is using the environment. Um, I would be remiss not to talk a little bit about the teaching methodology. So I just wanna take uh, three or four minutes to talk through these. Now I wanna be very clear. The teaching methodologies were on the fourth edition task list. They have since been removed and are no longer on the fourth edition task list. I do think that they could still fall under here. So I think it's important to talk through them. Do I think you're gonna see it on the test? Probably not. Um, I, I obviously didn't write the, the ACB test and I don't know what questions are on the test because we're not allowed to do that, right? But um, you might see a question about these things because you can make an argument that they fall here. Um, I don't think you should see too many questions on them because again, they used to be spelled out in the fourth edition task list and they've since been removed. So uh, the first one that I wanna talk about is uh, precision teaching. So precision teaching was um, established by Ogden Lindsay, Lindsley, Ogden Lindsley. Uh, it uses standard acceleration charts. So whenever we think about this elusive thing of a standard acceleration chart, which simply is measuring how rates change over time, right? Fluency is, is the word we're looking for with precision teaching. But that's what it is, right? It's uh, looking for fluency. We're checking responses frequently. We're charting those responses frequently. And we're worried about fluency. 
So that's precision teaching. Uh, the next one is personalized systems of instruction. The AKA is the Keller plan. Um, Dr. Keller created it. Uh, this is like college classes. So it uses proctors or teacher's assistants. Um, it's self-paced. So in a lot of college courses, you kind of work through the material at your own pace. Um, subject matter is broken into meaningful units. So I'm a co-instructor at I was and still do co-instructing at Arizona State. And what we do is um, we have different modules. And so we take the material and we break that material up into different modules, right? And so um, subject matter broken down into meaningful parts. That's part of it. And then it's self-paced. So they'll go at the learner's pace. That's why it's personalized systems of instruction. So again, your keys are, um, it's also referred to as the Keller plan, proctors, um, subject matter broken down and personalized instruction are your keys there. And then the last one of those three is uh, direct instruction. This was established by Siegfried Engelman, Dr. Engelman. Um, what this uses is uh, like group instruction. It's fast paced. Everyone responds at the same time. So we call that choral responding um, and we, you know, do group instruction. So that's direct instruction. Don't really know why it's called direct instruction because we're using groups so and we're having choral responding. So I'm not exactly sure why they call it direct instruction, but that's what it's called. Um, so again, these are we can make an argument that they fall under G9, but they're not uh, overtly um, outlined on the task list like they used to be. It's more of a covert thing now if I'm using ABA terms. Sweet. Um, all right, let's jump into our three questions and then we'll rock and roll. So question number one, while playing with blocks, the RBT restricted access to the blocks and says, touch your head. This most closely resembles naturalistic teaching, free opera and arrangements, discrete trial training, or manned training. You can throw your answers in the chat. Um, once I get, there's like 12 people here. So once I get six chats, I will go ahead and go through the answer. Sweet. Um, I love it. So uh, let's look and see kind of the important pieces of information here. While playing with blocks, the RBT restricted access to the blocks. So we're using motivation. So I think that's an important kind of important piece. It also could throw you off. Um, and then we say touch your head. Touch your head. I'm looking for a clear response. So it's not naturalistic because I'm not using the environment, right? I'm not having you stack the blocks. I'm not having you tacked the blocks. I'm not having you um, tack the color of the blocks. So this really is not naturalistic. I'm not using the environment other than um, using it as motivation, which falls under somewhere else. It's not a free operant arrangement, meaning that, you know, you are free to touch your head whenever you want, but I've specifically asked you to do that. And so now we have a clear response that we're looking for. So this is C discrete trial training is the correct answer. Um, it's definitely not man training, so we'd get rid of that, but C, direct trial, discrete trial training is what it is. Um, touch your head is a discrete trial. We want you to touch your head. Um, if you've, and again, I think this is probably just from my teaching, y'all might not have been taught like this, but I want you to get away from the fact that um, discrete trial training has to occur at a table. It certainly doesn't, it can occur absolutely anywhere. What it is, is there is a clear um, response that we're looking for. Here, it's touching your head. Sweet. Uh, your BCBA wrote a program that you are to implement when your client is engaging with cars. You should engage in parallel play and crash two cars together while saying, do this. This most closely re resembles A, naturalistic teaching, B, free operant arrangements, C, discrete trial training, or D, man training. Cool, thank you all for participating. Lots of comments in the chat, so I appreciate it. Uh, let's go through each one. First, if I'm pulling the key piece of information out, um, your clients engaging with cars or they you're, you're to run this only when they engage with cars and when they engage with cars you should be engaging with parallel play with the cars 
and saying, do this while crashing them. So I'm um, encouraging imitation through using the item that they're using. That again, tells me that I'm using the environment in order to evoke this trial. Um, and so this is A, is the correct answer, naturalistic teaching. We're using the environment. If they play with cars, they like to crash them or whatever, we want to um, uh, evoke an imitation of them crashing the cars that they're engaging with. That would be naturalistic teaching. Uh, it's not free operant. We're not kind of contriving a situation. We're not um, establishing motivation necessarily and having them do something else. Um, so it's not discrete trial, though I could see how you might have thought that, but we're using the cars that they're already engaging with. So when we use that thing, when we use the environment, that's naturalistic teaching. Uh, and it's not a free operant arrangement because they do need to crash the cars. So there's, I'm looking for one response there. And then we know it's not man training. So um, that's our throwaway answer. Awesome. Uh, let's look at our last question. You present your client with a picture of 50 zoo animals and ask them to point to their three favorites. This most closely resembles naturalistic, free operant, discrete, or manned training. Cool. So um, this one is going to be, drum roll. All right. Well, let's look at the question first. So uh, we present them with a picture of, or a, uh, a picture of 50 zoo animals. Now they have the opportunity to point to whatever their favorite zoo animal is. They are free to choose. That makes it a free operant arrangement. We are allowing them to choose any of the 50 items. They have to choose three of them, obviously, but they could pick any of them. Um, it's not naturalistic because we presented the client with the picture. If they were looking at a picture of zoo animals and we said, which one has stripes, that would be naturalistic teaching. We didn't do that. Um, it's not a discrete trial. If we presented them with one um, animal and said, what is it? That would be a discrete trial. So this one does fall under free operant because even though they're picking three, they still are free to choose those three. So that's a free operant arrangement. Sweet. Let me just take you to our website and then I'll um, moderate the chat, answer any questions and give away some free stuff. Because that's what we love to do. Um, I also want to tell you guys about a giveaway that we're about to start, but let me, you'll be the first people to hear about it. But first, let me um, just show you. I just want to show you the calendar. So the calendar here shows what we're going through. So today, again, we went through G9. Next Wednesday, we'll be going through I5. And these are listed, but if there's ever something you all are interested in learning more about, you can send us an email and we can change it. Like next week, I honestly don't like section I. So if someone emailed me and was like, let's go through something else, promise you I'd change it. Um, but anyways, really these are for you. We, we try to take these 30 minutes out of our week to help you all study. Um, and so if there's something you want to go through, just send me an email, um, Miko, M-E-I-K-O, I before E, except in Miko, at behavioranalystsupervisor.com. You can also email info, and we'd be happy to help you out there too. So, um, and then obviously you can look about all of our different things that we have, this individual items, whatever. 